Hello, and welcome to another edition of the book review blog. I am your book reviewer, and today we're going to review the book Wolves of the Cala by Stephen King. It is a Dark Tower book, um, and it is the fifth book in the series. Excuse me. Um, it starts off by, of course, the group walking, uh, Roland, Deschain, Eddie Dean, Susanna Dean, um, Jake Chambers, and their little Billy Bumbler uh, named Oi. And they're walking along and they find a desert, a desert town um, called Cala Bryn Sturgis. Um, and there's, um, there's people living in it. And these people are rather distraught because they, um, there's a tale in their town of these wolves that come by, um, they could say once in a generation. And so about once every 20, 20, 25 years or so and, uh, take a child and they don't want this to happen anymore. So, um, and the next time that these wolves are supposed to be coming is very soon in this time period. And so they ask the group, hey, can you help us and defeat these wolves? Because they see all their guns and they're like, oh, these are gunslingers. Woohoo, let's, let's have them help us. So um, Roland and Eddie and Susanna and Jake uh, agree to help. And so most of this uh, story takes place in this town. And also while they're there, they meet a resident named Father Callahan. And if you are familiar with Stephen King's work, uh, Father Callahan is a, is a major character in the book Salem's Lot. Um, he has, in Salem's Lot, he deals with vampires, and I hope to read that book soon and do a review of that. But, and he brings a lot of what happened to him in Salem's Lot in this book where he tells Roland and his gang about um, his um, trials and, and problems in, in Jerusalem's Lot, which is the full name of the Salem's Lot town. And again, if you're familiar with Salem's Lot, then you can um, understand and, and see the similar things because it's, it's almost like it's taken right out of Salem's lot. So, um, and again, they really, they learn about the town and they really learn. They like the people that live in the town. Uh, Jake even finds a friend named Benny Slightman who, um, is about his age and he kind of hangs around with him, which is nice. And, um, however, along the way, they come across these, um, what I'm imagining is poisonous mushrooms and, um, when, and I believe it's Jake, Eddie, and Susanna eat them and not knowing that they're poisonous. And what happens is that when they dream or when they go to sleep, they find themselves in New York in around 1977 and they're able to walk along and, um, walk along the path and Jake remembers being in there in 1977 because this is like his time of when when he was out of Midworld and in our world um this was the year that he had his little accident where he became came into Midworld so um again it's kind of confusing but when they're there um Jake remembers that in the third book of the Wastelands um, that he came across a vacant lot and it had one single rose growing from it and he was very drawn to this rose because it, it just like again it's a vacant lot kind of um, but there, there's one rose growing out of it so he was um, so he thought that was kind of cool and but when they're in this book, they're realizing that this vacant lot is owned by, um, or is being used by this man named Calvin Tower, who owns the bookshop that Jake buys a book in, in, uh, again, the Wastelands. Um, and so they have to save 
and what's happening is that Calvin Towers land, this vacant lot is almost being lost to him um, because he hasn't been paying his bills. But there, the gang is realizing that they have to save this because they have to save this little Rose. And, um, it's very strange. And it's one of those books in that you have to know what's going on in book number three to understand what's going on in book number five in this part of it. And another kind of odd little moment is along while they're in Kala and dealing with these people and, and waiting for these wolves to arrive is that Susanna is, is changing mentally and, um, and physically sort of, um, she, not only is she kind of has the same, um, personalities of Odetta and Detta as when she had, when she, uh, came to, became part of the gang and, and the group, but she also has, um, assumed another personality named Mia. And this happened again back in, um, book number three, um, and apparently there was a cataclysmic thing with Susanna where she became, um, entangled with this demon and somehow the demon got inside of her and became this, um, personality named Mia and Mia is known as the mother of no one. And when Susanna be and becomes this personality of Mia, she is pregnant and um and she has to feed and she feeds on like really gross things um this book is is quite scary um especially with this Mia character and it's also kind of gross um so those with weak stomachs probably might not want to read this one but anyway um and Roland realizes what's going on with Susanna and he tells Eddie about it and Eddie is first kind of shocked, but he's like, yeah, you know, you're right. And then the funny part is, is when they go tell Susanna about it, she initially, um, you know, said, no, I don't know what you're talking about. This doesn't happen. And then she's like, you know, yes, this is, I do feel it, that this is happening. Um, I'm not quite sure what to do about it, but, and Roland and Eddie are like, well, we know when it happens, so we'll watch it. So, um, and this, when they get to Kala, the wolves are coming in a month. So they've got a month of living in Kala and, and interacting with these characters and, um, and trying to save this rose, this vacant lot rose, which it doesn't get or resolved in, um, this book. I'm assuming it gets resolved in other books. Um, and dealing with this. Susanna, Mia situation. And um, that was a part that about this book that I didn't like was that, to me, it really could have been shortened. Um, maybe, again, I know a lot goes on, but it kind of dragged on, and that's why it took me a long time to read this book. Um, and, then, and then it was just, again, this isn't my type of genre that I'm usually used to, but so I wasn't, I didn't understand a lot of it, but I'm still pressing on and trying to get through the series. So, cause I do still like it. Um, and one of the things that happens in the end is that the wolves come and, and they're all saved. Um, but Susanna ends up leaving the group and she, um, goes through this, box that they, that Eddie and Roland found in Kala. And it was, I don't want to say it's necessarily Pandora's box kind of, but that's what I imagine. It's like a box that when it's opened, um, Eddie and Roland and Jake and Susanna are able to go back into New York of 1977 without eating the poisonous mushrooms. Um, but Susanna just kind of jumps through the box and enters, um, New York of 1977. And that's where the book ends or ends for her story anyway. And so I'm assuming that once book six happens, they go and find her and all that fun stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, again, 
I liked the book, but it could have been shorter. Um, that's really all I'm going to say about it. Um, those of you who like this type of book, I'm sure you, you, you will like it as well. Um, the next book that I'm going to read is, um, a little different. It's, um, with the, um, with Holy Week Among Us and Easter Among Us, I wanted to read a book that I had on, um, Pontius Pilate. It's by Paul Meyer. And that will be the book that I'll read next. And I bid you all farewell and happy reading. <laughs>